almost the entire fourth chapter of the Gospel of John, so focus is an issue for you. I invite you to grab a Red Pew Bible and turn with me to this chapter in John. It's uh, page 97. And follow along. Imagine this. Close your eyes and put yourself in this story. If you like. John chapter 4, and we're going to begin at the first verse. Now Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John. Although it was not Jesus himself, who, but his disciples who baptized. He left Judea and started back to Galilee. But he had to go through Samaria, so he came to the Samaritan town called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water from the well, and she, Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, what, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you an ancestor, a greater an Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one that you are with now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship that which you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then the disciples returned. They were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you want? Or why are you talking to this woman? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to Jesus. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you, and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. How the fields are ripe for harvesting. The re reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying hold, holds true. One sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from the city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritan came to him, they asked that when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe. 
For we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the good news, the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the good news, the gospel of our Lord. Thank you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, on this third Sunday in the season of Lent, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. In a book written by former President Jimmy Carter called Living Faith, Carter talks about the barriers that divide people and give them a false sense of identity. Having grown up in the South during racial segregation, Carter had many African American friends. When his parents were away, in fact, he would stay with his black neighbors, Jack and Rachel Clark. He played with black friends, went fishing with them, plowed with mules side by side, and played on the same baseball team together. But when he carried water to people who were working in the field, it was unthinkable that black workers and white workers would drink from the same dipper. In spite of all the barriers being broken down in Jimmy Carter's numerous intimate moments shared as a child with his African-American brothers and sisters in Christ, close family, neighbors, and friends, a barrier still remained. Blacks and whites could not share from the same cup for a simple, cool drink of water. I'm a bit of an icon hunter, they call it. I love searching for icons of the faith that speak in profound ways to our relationship with God and to with one another as brothers and sisters together in the body of Christ. As I prayed through and reflected upon the fourth chapter of the Gospel of St. John this week, I couldn't help but think about the icon that's on the screen behind me today. This is a recent icon, a modern-day icon, first created in 2002 by Brother Robert Lenz. It's a piece called Christ of Mary Knoll. The artist's vision in this icon is to lift up the ministry of the Mary Knoll priests and sisters and brothers and lay people who have been imprisoned in China and elsewhere in Asia for their work among the poor, the broken, and the oppressed. One thing that I want you to see in this icon as you reflect upon it is that it doesn't make it clear which side of the barbed wire fence the figure of Jesus is on. Is Jesus imprisoned behind the fence? Or are we imprisoned behind the fence? About the icon, Brother Lentz writes, Through our cultural institutions and personal lives, we all place barriers between ourselves and true happiness. We and our institutions also try to imprison Christ in various ways to tame him and the dangerous memories that he would bring us of our goals and ideals. In our worship together today, there is a daring and dangerous conversation taking place at a well. And this isn't just any old well. This is Jacob's well, a significant and important location in the history of God's people and of God's story. And this isn't just any old conversation either. This is a conversation between a woman and a man in the middle of the day. This isn't even making it more complicated. It's a conversation between a Samaritan woman and a Jewish man. Both are crossing barriers. And I argue that both are seeking to quench thirst. Thirst is quenched as a result of their conversation. A conversation, folks, that happens to be one of the longest conversations between any two people in any of the four Gospels. A quench, a thirst quenched is the result of a barrier that stood between Jews and Samaritans for centuries. A barbed wire fence that's being torn down in a most unlikely encounter between Jesus and a loved child of God who everyone thinks is on the wrong side of the fence. And for two more days, Jesus stays with them. Jews and Samaritans. 
drinking from the same cup. In 1991, Mercedes-Benz produced a television commercial that shows several of their Mercedes colliding into cement barriers during safety tests. In the course of this brief commercial, an interviewer is asking one of the German engineers about this new energy-absorbing car technology that they've recently patented. And Mercedes' design is one of the most sophisticated designs in the history of automobile manufacturing. It's also one that's been copied by nearly every car manufacturer in every car since. Take a look at the commercial, and I want you to note what the engineer says right at the end of it about why they've never enforced the patents that they hold on this technology. So how many cars does Mercedes have to crash every year? Oh, I say about 100. You can never learn enough. Uh, Ever since we have it patented, we have been improving this concept of the energy-absorbing car bodies. But other companies use the concept? Uh, We have never enforced the patent. So Mercedes gave away a basic safety advance for free? There are some things in life that are too important not to share. Did you catch that? There are some things in life that are too important not to share. Isn't that a great statement for who you and I are? Or are supposed to live as people who follow Jesus? The the living water that we receive in the life, death, and resurrection of our Savior Jesus is just too important not to share, isn't it? Too important not to invite others to join us in this journey. Too important to not reach out to the other person on the other side of the fence with the life-giving drink from the well of living water. Too important. But too often, I'm not sure that we even know or are willing to admit that we're thirsty in your life in Christ. What are some things that weigh heavy on your heart or clutter your mind? What causes your thirst? For the Samaritan woman at the well, it was everything that she had ever done. And by sharing with others the conversation that she had had with Jesus, her life in the community in which she lived was changed forever. It was just too significant and too important of a conversation and experience to not share with someone. In another book written by former President Carter called Sources of Strength, and actually that's a book that you can find right here in our library at Good Shepherd, President Carter concludes a brief devotion on, John's, on this text from John's Gospel reading today by saying, she, the Samaritan woman, may have lost her bucket, but she gained instead the living water of God's love. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Every one of us here today is thirsty. In this holy season of Lent, you and I are being invited to stop for a few minutes at the well and drink deeply from the living water of God's love. Drink deeply, children of God. You are loved. And that's just too important not to share. Amen.